as a glass artist, I best describe my work as very three-dimensional and creative. It's not something that's flat. Um, I like to embed lots of things within the glass. I like it to stretch its medium. I like to incorporate lots of different things within my glass as well. Not only glass, recycled glass, shells, washed up bottle glass, organic matter, um, many, many different things within the glass that makes it more than what it is originally. What's drawn me to glass is its malleableness. It may be flat and hard and sharp, and yet it's soft, smooth and very malleable. I like that it can uh, be added to, it can be painted, it can be uh, stretched and formed and melted and slumped. It can be pushed in any, any way that my mind can sort of expand it to. What I'm working on at the moment is a sea scene and I'm having an absolute ball with this. I'm, I'm, I've been asked to create the sea from below and above. The coral and the sands and, and the sea life within the sea and the movement and the flow that the whole sea has. I've been creating amazing little pieces of glass that are very delicate and delicious for what's under the sea. I've been able to incorporate many different methods of glass with melting and slumping and building the layers of glass, being able to use different methods of uh, glass fruit, confetti, uh, dichroic and a whole range of aspects that the glass industry supplies us with. And with this I can create what my mind sees for under the sea. Um, my studio space is my heaven. It is where I come in here and I can just really be free. Um, home is where the heart is and my heart is in my studio. I think I would best describe myself as a pastel artist or a painter. The benefits of my practice for me is not necessarily like a therapeutic thing, it's the sort of feeling when I do get something done that I really, really enjoy and really like and then sort of the accomplishment of that and working on that sort of I think what's drawn me to doing portraits is the fact that it's very difficult and there's so much more you can learn, but it's also so different because there are so many different faces, but it's on the base that you can work from. What I like best about using pastels, and recently I've also discovered oils, rub backs, which are like using your fingers to sort of rub into the wet oil. And that it's, the, it's sort of sculptural and you can use your fingers and really like manipulate it. That's the thing. I like the direct contact with something. This is another one of my rub backs and in this one I scratched the beard into it with the back of my brush. When I make artworks I like to really use myself and put myself in the artwork. Like particularly with pastel, like you get my fingerprints very distinctly in the pieces. And when you are working on something on such a big scale, you have to walk around it and you get physically tired, like alongside with what you're doing. And so you sort of impart some of that into your work. I think um, I feel most creative, not necessarily in a place, but more of a mindset and sort of being by myself in sort of a secluded place, like if it's really late or there's no one there. And that's where I feel most creative when I have solitude sort of thing. Uh, what drew me to photography uh, was the fact that I was probably pretty hopeless at everything else when I was about 15, 16. I wasn't good at sport. I was academically lazy and uh, I discovered photography and it, it, uh, it was a light bulb moment for me. I knew what I wanted to do for the rest of my life when I found that. I've just been working on a series uh, really drawing from 1970 one through to uh, February this year on politics. Uh, it's a, I've just published a new book called Political Vision and it, it, it shows every opposition leader and Prime Minister since uh, Gough Whitlam. I, I want to talk about this photograph. Uh, this is a portrait of uh, Joanne Arkell who's a, a roustabout, a, you know, a labourer in a, a shearing shed and it's part of my exhibition and a book called The Shearers. And Jai had just finished working on a shed up near Hay in New South Wales in about 2001 and she came out of the shed and she was really tired. People who work in shearing sheds 
um, work harder than you'll ever see people work. And she was just really, really top. And I said, do you mind if I took the portrait? And she said, oh, I don't think so. No, that's all right, thank you. And I said, look, I'd really like to do this. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's a great time. And she said, okay. And then she just looked down the camera and she had this steer in her eyes that almost went straight down the lens and straight out the back of my head. And it's, it's what I refer to as a, a thousand mile steer. I can photograph anybody. I find it very easy to just photograph any, anyone. But it's very rare the times when a photograph ring is really true to you. And, and it's just got that certain something, je ne sais quoi. It's just got it. And to me, that photograph of Joanne has that. I would say that a lot of the work I do is influenced by my surroundings because I've lived up in the hills since 1979. and. Um, you can't but be amazed by the beautiful environment that you have up here. If you want to be a sports photographer in this country and you're good and you show talent, you can be sitting on the, on the ground of the MCG, not 10 rows back. You can have the front row vision to those things that are happening in the world. And, you know, whether it be fashion or politics or sport or music, if you're really good, you can be the witness to those things as a photojournalist. You won't necessarily get rich, and, uh, but you'll have a really rich life experience. Part of you, you give to someone else too. That's the things I really enjoy about it. 